Good morning, Floss Tube. I'm Misty Purcell. Welcome to my channel. Today is Saturday, uh, January 9th, 2021. Welcome back. Today I'm having what I'm calling the airing of the whips, which is a whip parade. And I'm going to be talking to you about the projects I have going. If you don't know what a whip is, it's a work in progress. Um, these are things that I've started, but I haven't completed, and I'm going to show you what I've been working on, or not, and talk a little bit about um, the things that I think I might discontinue, the things I plan to continue, and just kind of give you my thoughts on them. So that's what this video will be about primarily. And um, just want to start off by saying that I hope that you had um, a good holiday with your uh, family and wh whatever way you were able to connect with them. I had a really nice time at Christmas and New Year's and I just wanted to thank you for all of your really nice comments on my last video, wishing my mom well on her surgery. It went really well. She had a great doctor and a great medical team. Um, it went very smoothly and she's doing great. So I just really appreciate your wishes for her, um, your prayers. So thank you so much and I'm happy to report that she's doing really well. Um, I've been keeping really busy. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video. Um, I think I'm ready to get started, so let's talk about what I've been working on. Um, these are all projects. I'm a, if you don't know, if you're new here, I'm also a cross-stitch designer and I dye fabric, uh, but all the projects that I'll be showing you today in this whip parade are just um, my recreational stitching, the things that I do for fun. Um, in between my own designs, so I won't be showing any of my designs in this because usually they're, you know, getting ready to be released or, or I'm in the middle of them, so I can't show them yet. Okay, so I'm kind of going in um, more or less chrono chronological order. All of these designs, um, all these projects were projects I started in 2020 for the first part. So I've got two kinds of whip categories that I'm gonna talk about today. The first kind are just regular whips that need to be finished at some point, or I'm gonna maybe abandon a few of them. And then I have a second category that I'm referring to as, hey, I can stop anytime that I want to. Um, and that's basically projects where I'm kind of working on like a series of little projects within a within a leaflet or within a series itself. And I'm, I'm just gonna stitch until I'm done you'll see what I mean. So we're starting with the regular whips and the first one is Vintage Birds. Let me get that for you. This is designed by Jeanette Douglas. I want to say I started this last February but I didn't check because I didn't really think it mattered that much when I started it. It was sometime in 2020. And I'm using almost all of the charted flosses and I'm using my own hand dyed fabric. There's gonna be a little bit of rust, uh, rustling of plastic and such because I'm trying to keep this somewhat neat so that I don't have um, a giant mess in my living room at the end of this. It's gonna be one anyway, but it'll be less of a giant mess. Okay, so my fabric is a solo that I dyed, but it's kind of similar to my color Sparrow. I did actually pick this, whoops, Wrong side. I did actually pick this back up um, just recently. I had been working on this flower here, so I finished the flower and I'm making my way down. Uh, this was in a scroll rod and I just decided I'm stitching a little bit differently lately and either I'm using a hoop or I'm stitching in hand. So I decided to just take it out of the scroll rod and I'm stitching it in hand because I didn't make it quite wide enough to put it in a hoop, but that's fine. So the peacock is obviously the awesomest part of this thing. So cool. So I'm planning to continue and it'd be nice if I finish this in 2021. I don't know if I will, I'm not putting pressure on myself, but it'd be nice if I did. I did take the time to iron all of these pieces, not so that they look amazing, but just so that they're flat. <laughs> so you might see wrinkles, but I tried to make them um, so you could see at least what was going on. Okay, so Vintage Birds started sometime last spring, early spring, I think. Oh, and that was a 40 count fabric, 40 count linen. I didn't say that. 
but it doesn't have a name because it's a solo. It was just a test die that I was doing. Okay, next is my birthday start from last year, which was that one I can tell you the date, but I can't get you the pattern. Okay, here we go. So my birthday was April 30th. I turned 40 in 2020 and I decided to start the Bee Skep from this booklet, which is called uh, Agnes Platt's Strawberry Sampler. So there are a few different projects in here, but this is the one that I was most drawn to. So this was my birthday start and I'm stitching this on 40 count macchiato, which is a color I dye. And I think this is really beautiful. There's a little bit of lazy daisy stitching on the bee wings there. Um, I don't believe that I've changed any of the colors except for this was supposed to be a blended thread, if I remember correctly, and I just picked an over-dyed floss that gave the same effect as blending two, two strands of floss together. So I'm stitching with one strand. If you have questions about the scroll rods, I've got a, pro a couple projects on scroll rods, and I've got one project on stretcher bars. Um, I'll put that in the description below the video rather than repeat it, because some people have been here for a long time and they've, they've heard it a lot. Um, so I don't want to keep repeating it for people. So you can just find that in the description below the video. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I love it. I plan to keep working on it till it's done. Who knows when that'll be. Next, Beggar's Fourth. Now I'm not quite sure with some of these summer projects what the exact order was, but I'm just guessing that, that I'm approximate. Okay, so this was, I questioned my wisdom on this one a little bit. I've had this in my stash for a while. I kitted it up. Okay, this is by Threadwork Primitives. And the thing that I questioned was really my fabric choice in terms of count. Stitching this, I wanted to see if I could do it. So I started on 56 count. It looks awesome. It's just not easy to stitch on 56 count. Uh, one thing that helps is using a shorter length of thread. So I'm definitely using shorter floss lengths and you can get, I mean, it's amazing when you're stitching so tiny, um, how much mileage you can get even out of a much shorter strand of floss. So this is 56 count Sparrow. And yeah, it's just slow going to stitch on such tiny fabric. So I'm going to see how it goes. If I'm not enjoying it this summer, then I'll just start over um, on a little bit lower count, like a 40 or something, or I could stitch it over one on 27 count or something like that. I did change some of the colors. I think, I don't know. I might have changed all of them. I'm not, I'm not honestly sure. <laughs> Who can say? Um, let's see if I can... I'm, uh, the call of four colors are black coffee and cayenne by classic color works gentle art freedom and flax and there's a dmc no are there four colors one two yeah okay so classic color works black coffee and cayenne gentle art freedom and flax i don't think i'm using any of those Weeks Angel Hair is my neutral, my like white, off-white. Licorice Red is my red. Blue is Presidential Blue, I know, because I love that blue. Okay, so Black Coffee is the only thing that I'm going to be planning to adhere to, and then everything else I've changed. So, happy, but perhaps not with my choice of count. We'll see how it goes. Like I said, I don't want to like a, not want to stitch on this. So if I need to change fabric, I will. Okay, um, summer delivery is next. That's by Plum Street. Another one I started this summer. Changed some of the colors. Really pretty piece. This has a lot of kind of big fill in, and I have to be in the right mood for that. So. That is the reason I think that I'm having a little bit of a hard time 
working on this. This is 40 count Sparrow again. You can see it's a little bit more golden brown here. The dye lot varies quite a bit. Like the, the dye has changed over time as I've been using the, the color. Um, so yeah, very pretty, but I get a little bit bored with the fill in, which is weird because sometimes I'm fine with fill in and sometimes I'm not. So I don't know what my problem is with this, but I love it. But there's something about it that I'm having a hard time with and I can't quite pinpoint it other than that there's a lot of fill in. Again, it doesn't really make sense though because the design's awesome. I don't know what, I don't know what my problem is. <laughs> so another one that could potentially not make it into 2022 if I don't pick it up. So if I'm not drawn to it, then I'm just gonna say, okay, and let it go. Next is by Blackbird Designs. It's a reprint, the Loose Feathers series. I started with Summer and I plan to stitch all three on one piece of fabric. I started this on the summer solstice. I had this idea that I would then start the um, autumn one on the fall equinox and then the winter solstice for winter, and I've not done any of that. So I only started on the summer solstice, and I've gotten some of this done. And I'm going to change what it says up here. I decided at some point to change the letters. So there's some of the letters, and then it says to it's going to say to everything there's a season, but I haven't gotten too far with that. I've changed some of the colors to match the pattern photo a little bit more. And I'm questioning one of the colors I used. Again, 40 count Sparrow. All the colors are great. I'm not sure about the dark color there on the bird. I just, I don't know if it's overpowering. From farther away, I don't think it looks too bad, but it just feels like I made it maybe a little bit too dark. <clears throat> so I don't know if I can bring myself to take that out. I might move on to other sections and see or or move on to more of the bottom to stitch of this and then see if I notice it as much because the reason I might be noticing it is because I haven't stitched anything around it. But I, I wish it were like a little bit more gray. But I'm gonna keep going. I like this. It's very pretty. So I got you know, of the two everything, I've just got the to. <laughs> okay. Spooky mantle. This one might get booted. Though I hate to boot it. This is the opposite problem to um, summer delivery. There's just a lot of color changes in a really small area, at least the part that I started. And I don't know why, but that's really bothering me a little bit right now. I don't feel like making tons of color changes in a small area. It's like, I, what do I, I'm like Goldilocks. Okay, this is too much filling. This is not enough filling. So what's just right? I don't even know. <laughs> but Okay, so this is also on 40 count Sparrow. I like doing 40 count a lot just because I can stitch it in hand if I want. I can use one strand so it uses less floss. As you can see that's all I got done. It's a little bit of the witch. The eyes of the bat are French knots. So it's definitely a cute design. I failed to say that's a bent crete design and it comes in several parts. I am using the called for DMC. So I'm not totally feeling this. It's another one that I'm going to see how I feel when I start working on Halloween. And if I'm not drawn to it, then I'll have to just move it along. Because life's too short to not stitch on things that you love. Okay, next up is Poinsettia House. This one I've gotten embarrassingly little done. It had been in my stash for quite a while, all kitted up. It's very sweet but I was not, for some reason, feeling drawn to stitch on it. Uh, I'm stitching this on 27 count Linda, and I'm stitching it over one. <laughs> Please excuse all the uh, pin marks on the front of this. I, I forgot once when I was uh, putting the pins in, so it's pinned on the back, but one time I flipped it the wrong way this time, and so now it looks like someone's been eating on it. So that's all I've done. A little bit of the, oops. 
vine and like I said I'm not but I haven't really like I've only probably stitched on this twice I haven't made a lot of effort so I'll, I'll do the same thing I'll give it a little bit of time and see how I feel um and then I'll decide so I think I've got like what four maybe so far that I might not continue into 2022 which kind of feels like a lot um but I did find the other day I was realizing that so I have obviously more whips than what I used to have. And I've had conversations on my channel about, you know, how many whips are too many or enough or whatever. And it's different for different people. I like the number of projects I have available right now. So that when I finish something, I can go pick something up that I've already started if I want, or I can start something new. And I tend to go through cycles where I feel like starting a few new things. And then I go through periods where I don't want to start anything new. I just want to finish things. I'm in more of a finishing mode right now. And um, so it's nice to have a variety of whips, but of course the more whips I have, then I tend to have more that I might not want to stitch. And I don't know if that's because I start things more impulsively, although honestly, if I've had something kitted up for years, that's not very impulsive, is it? I mean, I don't know. So I don't know, I don't know what it is, but I do find that, I guess it's just because you have several things going at once, you notice what you're drawn to. And so if there are things you're not drawn to, then you're like, well, Okay, should I continue them? And so that's probably what it is. If you've only got a couple things going, those are your two choices. But if you've got 10 options, then some are, you know, just going to fall down on the scale in, in your queue, your mental queue of what you want to work on. And I think that's probably what's happening here. Okay, uh, two more are in my regular whip category. So one of them is Chuck Full Christmas. This is by Erica Michaels. I just started this recently. When it came out, I really loved it. I still think it's a great design, but I have decided to stop it. So I'll tell you what I'm doing. Uh, again, it feels like I have to switch colors an awful lot and I'm getting a little tired of that for some reason. <clears throat> also, the colors don't quite feel like me. I think they're almost a little bit too bright, which is weird because, you know, I like brighter colors, but it feels like maybe they're a little too bright. There's a little too much green here for me. I tend to like more red Christmas. I think I mentioned that before when I was talking about this piece. This is stitched on 40 count. Um, who am I stitching this on? Macchiato, uh, which I dye. And I've used all the called for colors, except I did change the red to make it less pink. And I think I changed the black on the cardinals but everything else is what's called for so I'm not loving it even though I think it's a great design and I decided I'm just gonna make it an ornament so I'll finish up what's here I'm gonna put something here maybe I'll flip this upside down and stick it here or maybe I'll put a word or something and that's gonna be an ornament and I'm done so that's that one whip that's not making it into 2022 for sure and then lastly I'm working on <clears throat> Winter Rose Manor by Brenda Gervais. And that's going along well. This is being stitched on 40 count raw linen by Zweigert. One strand of floss over two fabric threads. I've changed some of the colors. It's funny, I was stitching on this while talking to a friend the other day. And when I pulled it out in my head, I just stitched a lot more than when it actually had stitched. But by the end of the call, I'm to the point where I thought I was before I got on the call. So this is where I imagined myself to be before I started stitching, but this is actually where I ended up at the end of the call. So one thing to watch out on the chart is that the space between these, this row of windows and this row of windows is not the same here as here. I think this is like six rows of pink. This is five. So just make sure you're looking at your chart carefully. So that's looking good. I'm going to keep going on that. It's going to take me quite a while and it just takes however long it takes. Alrighty. Let me pause and then I will show you the next group. Okay, so this is the category of, hey, I can stop any time that I want to, whips. And these are <clears throat> projects I've started where 
maybe it's like a collection of prairie schooler ornaments in some cases and I either want to stitch the whole series of them or I just want to stitch some of them but since it's not one big piece I can technically stop anytime that I want to when I get tired of it. So this first one is Signs of Spring by Prairie Schooler. I started working on this a couple years ago and I'm putting it on a win. I have um, an, a display idea, <clears throat> which if you've been here for a while, you know what I'm talking about. I have a window in my living room that's on a wall, like it's a decorative window, not a real window and it has a mirror in it. And then I've got a branch above it. And my idea after seeing this at a cross stitch stop was to, I saw a couple different ideas. The window was one idea, the branch was another idea. I put them together. So um, the window would have a prairie schooler sampler, seasonal sampler hanging from it. And then on the branches, there would be four or five ornaments. If I can find a photo of my Halloween one that's the only one I have done but my idea was to do a Christmas slash winter or maybe two separate ones like maybe a Christmas and a winter um, Halloween spring summer and so um that's one idea that is a long-term whip that I thought would probably take me five years and it's probably gonna take me even longer than that so um anyway right now I'm working on the Halloween one is done and I have the winter sampler done but no ornaments and then I'm working on the ornaments for so. Here's one. And then I've got these guys. So I'm thinking I left enough room here that I could do three because I thought I wanted five. If I don't feel like doing five, if I feel like only doing four, then I'll do one more and I'll do the sheep. And if I feel like doing a fifth one, I'll do the, these running bunnies, these bunnies down here. So two of them have the light blue background. And then one, like two or three of them will have this darker blue background. I've changed most or all of the colors. So I'm either gonna do one more or two more. Hopefully I'll do at least one more this year. And that will be the sheep. So I'm feeling a little bit like I'd like to be done. Oh, this is um 32 count macchiato linen. Yeah, I'm feeling like I'd like to be done with it soon. So it might be that I only do four. So yeah, I can stop that anytime I want. <laughs> and next, we have Scary Apothecary. And I've got, um, I don't intend to do every single one in the series. I've done Bitter Brew. I'd like these to be a banner of some kind that I hang in my living room, probably. Or possibly on the hutch. I think I want about five of them, but it will depend on where I decide to display them. So I need to get a few of them stitched and then kind of figure out spatially where they're gonna go. And I've, of course, only stitched one quite a while ago, but I did love it. And I did change several of the colors. Really enjoyed doing the satin stitching on those bottles. This is on 32 count Whisper Linen, which is one that I dye. So yeah, we'll see how many more I do, but I allow myself the option to stop whenever I want. If I feel like, okay, I just need to move on. It's a great series, but if I need to move on, then I can just have one, <laughs> you know? We're flexible. I'm not gonna feel guilty about it. Okay, so next is Santa Rides. I was just working on the second one. I, I would like to stitch all of these. They remind me of some Hallmark ornaments that my mom and I have from the 80s. Um, I think they're really sweet. So ideally I would stitch all of them, but you know, we'll see how it goes. I am stitching these on 46 count, another solo that I dyed, it's linen, one strain of floss. I did change, I think all of the colors to look a little bit brighter like the pattern photo and it's it's kind of a green green blue color so I just finished Santa writing 
the horse. And I'll show you that in my next regular video. Since it was a finish, I thought I'd save it for that. But he's looking good. And I think, you know, I'll just keep doing these, like I said, until I get all of them or until I get tired of them, whichever happens first. Okay. Forgot to grab the piece that I stitched and finished, but I did just show it in a recent video, so you may have seen it already. I'm working on Songs of the Season. I don't think I'm gonna go grab it, but you've seen it, or go go check like maybe two videos ago or last video, it's in there. I stitched um, this one. I stitched it on a 25 count Lugana and I stitched it over one. I think I changed maybe a couple of the colors. I'm not sure. I might've used all of the called for. Anyway. I really love it. It turned out beautiful. This is a lot more stitching than you think. Just heads up. <laughs> I'd like to stitch all of these, except maybe not the angels. Not because I have anything against angels. I actually really think they're cool. But I'm just not sure if I'm going to like stitching that much two times. So that would be the only reason. My brain gets kind of bored easily. So doing something multiple times isn't my cup of tea usually and that's probably reflected to some extent in my designs um, that I try to make sure things aren't too repetitive in my designs or that there's at least color changes or something going on to make it more interesting for me <laughs> and hopefully for you. Um, so hopefully five of those but we'll see. And then oh Christmas tree. I stitched one of these. I didn't get I was hoping to do one a year but I didn't get to it in 2020. Do I not have, hmm. I don't have my stitch piece. To, oh, yes I do. It's on the scroll rod, so I forgot about it. Okay, this guy. I was just showing this recently. Okay, so this is a Christmas tree by Prairie Schooler. Stitching it on 32 count sea glass using two strands of floss. I believe I'm using the called for, except I did experiment with in his beard using one strand of sulky. And in, on camera, it looks a little bit better than it does in person. I feel like his beard could be a bit whiter. Whiter, not wider, but whiter. So um, I thought I would like to display these standing up um, like it shows. Oops. Like it shows there. And that I could do five of them. So I think the two houses, the little boy on the sled, and then Santa and the angel are probably what I would, would do. So that's my thoughts on that. I'm going to keep going whenever I can. And lastly, Barnyard Christmas, which was another one that I had hoped. I did one last year and I'd hoped to get to another one this year, but I did not, or in 2020. I did one in 2019. So confusing when you change years. And then I didn't do one in 2020 as I had hoped to do. So hopefully in 2021, this year. <laughs> but hey, we're only, what, nine days into it, so I haven't quite adjusted yet. So I... Uh, I don't know if I'll do all of them, but I think I would do most of them. I didn't really have a goal in mind. I just wanted to do them because I think they're cute. And the horse was one of my favorites, so I started with that. This is um, Macchiato Linda that I dyed 27 count. It's an even weave, 100% cotton. Stitched it over one. I changed some of the colors. Isn't that so pretty? Ugh. I really loved stitching this. It's so tiny and adorable. I really love tiny stuff if you don't know. Um, tiny knitting, tiny stitching. It's just cute. Okay. Those are my whips. So, um, other than that, just a couple of things. Um, I have a new shop. So I've been working behind the scenes to prepare a new shop. Um, I had previously a website where I didn't sell things, but I had product information. And then I had an Etsy shop where I sold things. 
and I wanted to combine the two into one thing. And I also just wanted to have a little bit more flexibility in creating a better shopping experience for people on my website. So I decided to start my own website and it's what my old uh, URL was for just the product information. So, but now you can shop on it. So it's uh, www.luminousfiberarts.com. I'll put the link below the video. I hope you'll get a chance to check it out. So that's where my print and PDF patterns are. Uh, my fabric, if I have patterns by other designers, they're there. Um, commercially available fabrics from like Zweigart, or if I get Picture This Plus, I've got a little bit of Picture This Plus. I've got a little bit of Weeks Zweigart base. Um, I might have a little bit of Vintage Country Mocha left. I've got a little bit of my fabric in the shop at the moment that I'm making this video that can change at any time. But <laughs> um, So I've got that. I've got, you know, the accessories I usually carry. So um, trims. Lots of goodies there and I'll continue to add basically right now what I'm doing is um, as I'm dyeing fabrics I'll put a little bit in my shop during weekdays when I have time and then most of it goes into a shop update where I send an email to people letting them know what's available and when so if you're interested it's also how I let people know about new designs that I have um, you can sign up for the newsletter and I will link it below in the description. So I'm really excited about the new website and I hope you'll enjoy it too. Um, other than that, I have a giveaway because I have been making floss tube videos for three years, if you can believe that. So I started in January of 2018. I'm trying to think if it was January 3rd. I don't know, but somewhere early in January. I started making videos. I don't know if I've ever talked about this, like why I started making videos, but um, I'd started watching Floss Tube. I found out about Floss Tube from Priscilla and Chelsea. I'd started following Priscilla on Instagram because I was getting back into cross stitch and I'd come across her. So when they made a Floss Tube video, I, I don't think I'd heard of Floss Tube at all or I didn't know what it was. Um, but I went to check them out and then I found Floss Tube and I started watching it. And that was probably in like August or something of 2017. So by Christmas of 2017, I I was toying with the idea. Maybe I could make videos. Um, I used to read blogs a lot and I had a blog and I posted regularly about all of my crafty endeavors, including cross stitch and quilting and whatever I was working on. I used to do that back in like... 2006, you know, to I don't know when I stopped doing it, but it, I did it for years. Uh, and I was like, well, you know, making a video is really just like writing a blog post, except you don't have to like read over your words a million times before you hit publish. And the other obvious difference is like, I was super camera shy and terrified of recording myself. Um, but I, I got up the courage because I told myself like, well, you don't have to publish it, so just make the video. And if you watch it and think it's awful, then don't post it. <laughs> you know, it's not like it's going immediately to um, YouTube. So that's what I did. And I was like, well, I don't know if anyone's gonna watch this, but it's not horrible, so I'll go ahead and post it. And you know, people were just really wonderful because this community is wonderful. And so I've been doing it ever since then. Some of you have been with me from the beginning. And some of you are brave and you go back and watch them all when you find me. And I don't know how you do that because it's a lot of videos. Um, but I wanted to celebrate and thank you for being with me and hanging with me all this time and just being so wonderful. So I have three things to give away because we're at year three of me making videos. So I'll show you what I'm going to give away and then I will tell you what you need to do. This was sent to me by Jeanette and she said, you know, you can keep this or if you already have it, feel free to give it away. And she has good taste. I do have it. <laughs> so I am going to give it away. This is Prairie Schooler American Strawberries. Isn't that a cute little chart there too? So that's one option. Also, <laughs> this I bought for Barbie for our um, swap. <clears throat> I bought it for her. I put it somewhere, could not find it for weeks. Finally had to just buy it again. 
um, and have them ship it directly to Barbie <laughs> because I, I couldn't find it. And finally, I was cleaning up not too long ago. I put it in a super weird place. I thought it was something else. Like I hadn't taken it out of the envelope. I thought it was something else. I'd put it in my craft room. And then when I opened it up, I was like, oh, that's where it is. So this is Thomas by Not Forgotten Farm. And then this is something that I stitched a couple of years ago and I decided it's time to pass the stash on this one. This is Cricut Collection Spring. I'll be putting that on display pretty soon, even though spring may not come here for a while. Um, so I stitched this, I really enjoyed it. It's a great, a great piece. And I thought I would pass it along to someone who would enjoy it. So the giveaway is this, you need to mention for whichever ones you'd like to enter, mention Thomas, mention Spring in your comment, and or, depending on if you want to be entered for three, two, one, uh, strawberries. So Thomas, Spring, strawberries. Mention any of those that you would like to be eligible for. You need to comment on the video. That's the only place you can comment to be entered for the giveaway. And please also tell me what is your favorite color of floss? I don't mean red or blue, but like the name of a color that you like. It could be, or a number like DMC uh, 347, which is a red I like. Um, or you like a silk, what shade of silk do you like? Um, or you like just a regular over dyed cotton? Tell me a color that you like. Um, so mention whichever charts you'd like to be entered for, color of floss that you like, the giveaway is open until midnight of Saturday, January 16th, so a week from today. <clears throat> you must be at least 18 years of age or older to enter. I will ship internationally, so you can live outside the United States and still be eligible. Um, please don't mention giveaway. Again, you need to comment only on this video. If you comment somewhere else, I won't be able to include you because I use a random comment selector and it scans the video comments in order to pick um, a winner. So if your comment isn't in the video comments, it can't pick you. Um, okay, I think that's everything. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Things are going okay. Uh, I'm trying to get ready for the semester to start. It starts on Tuesday the 19th, which is later than usual. So I've gotten a bonus week, um, but I've been working pretty hard lately trying to get my classes ready for um, the spring. They're remote. Um, if you're new here, I teach Spanish. I teach intensive Spanish and um, it's like beginner to intermediate level. It'll be uh, completely remote synchronous, meaning that it meets at a regular time. We meet four days a week. And um, so I'm just trying to get ready for that. And there's lots to do. It was nice over um, the holiday because the university was closed down and so I didn't get like any emails. <laughs> really at all. And then the university opened back up and my mailbox has just been like flooded with emails every day. And I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> it's like the email avalanche is back. Okay. Thanks so much for watching you guys. Um, I had intended to do a stitch with me before this, but I didn't get to it. So, um, that's something I'll be working on soon and that'll happen between this video and my next video for sure. Um, not sure how soon, but fairly soon. So have a great start to the year um, and hang in there. It's got to get better, right? We just have to keep being positive. So you take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.